My name is Heido and welcome to the Pantheon, where it's confirmed there's neon everywhere, there's lights shining upon us, especially from Kamigawa. And here at Kamigawa, we've got a, t a sushi? A sushi. Delicious sushi. The Blazing Sky. Four mana, four four flying trampler. Nice flampler. Dragon Spirit. When it dies, choose one. Exile the top two cards of your library until your next turn. You may play those cards or create three treasure tokens. Two excellent effects that we want on something when they're dying. You know, refunding some mana or digging us deeper into the deck. So really quite a cool mono red commander. I'm excited to see this sort of thing. And, you know, having the legendary dragon spirits back is really cool. You know, these are new ones. Uh, I think they've been reborn or something. I have no idea. I think most of them died, apart from where you say. I don't know. There's some lore implications. But it's cool to have them back. And do you know what else would be cool? <laughs> if you subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be making videos like this for every single legendary creature. So come and join me. And I think there's going to be quite a few in Kamigawa. Without further ado, let's have a look at my top five. In, in a number five... Well, what do we have? We've got Release the Gremlins. This has been one of my pet cards for quite a while now. I love this card. And the reason is we're going to be having a lot of sort of treasure sort of usage. You know, our commander makes treasures when it dies. You know, even if it goes to the command zone, we're still going to get those treasures because it dies and then goes to the command zone because of the new rules. So we can use this to make our treasures into 2-2 two -two Gremlins or our opponents. So red and double X, destroy X target artifacts. Create X 2-2 two -two red gremlin creature tokens. So that could be for our opponents, you know, destroy all their artifacts, the soul rings, things like that. Or we could blow up our own. It's a great universal sort of card that we can use on anything. Yes, it's very mana intensive, but we're going to be making a lot of treasures. So even if we're not blowing up our own treasures, we're going to have a lot of mana to be making stuff like this. Really cool card. Then if we've got a lot of artifacts, well, you know, we got to have artifacts really, aren't we? All of our ramp will be artifacts and we're going to have a lot of treasures knocking around. Kaldotha Forge Master, five mana, three, five, tap, sacrifice three artifacts. That's interesting. Our commander happens to make three artifacts. Search your library for an artifact card and put it onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. Just go and get a Blight Steel Colossus. You know, just whatever big sort of threat you want. Excellent card. A Mind Slaver, maybe. Personal favorite of mine. Then we've got Crack Clan Ironworks. When your treasures, you know, they're just not producing enough mana. Four mana for an artifact, sacrifice an artifact, add two colours, or two generic, to your mana pool. So, those three treasures now make six mana, and this is amazing. It can really go big in this deck, you know. This, I'd sort of play this as a sort of ramp deck, you know, flop out your commander. A bit weird, weird wording, but, you know, you can do it. And then we can use him to sort of sacrifice, get those treasures, and then play a big threat. Maybe an Eldrazi. Maybe an egg artifact. And then if we're playing with artifacts and we've got artifacts on the field, let's get them back from the graveyard. Trash for treasure. Three mana for a sorcery. An additional cast to cost this spell. No. There's additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice an artifact. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So excellent for rebuying. Mindslaver or something like that. We just sacrifice a treasure and bing bang bosh. We've got a great artifact on the field. But that takes me on to number four. At number four, we've got some dragon synergies. I did look for spirit synergies in Mono Red. It's not too many. There's one spirit that were five mana, three, one, I think it is. Whenever you cast a spirit, destroy target non-basic land. Not worth talking about, but it's also a dragon, our commander. So dragon speaker shaman is phenomenal. Three mana, two, two. Dragon spells you cast cost two less to cast, and that does affect the command attack. So the first time we're going to cast our commander, two red, and then four mana, and then, you know, it spirals out of control from there. But having a big reduction on our dragons, if we're playing a lot of dragons, is amazing. So this card, wonderful, wonderful card, works perfectly in the deck. Similarly, the Dragon Lord Servant. 
Two mana, one, three dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. So if we're putting a lot of dragon spells in, this is ramp. It's wonderful. It's early ramp. It's two mana. And yes, it's only a reduction of one compared with the shaman, but it's still good. It's nice to see. And it's a goblin holding up a platter of meat. Delicious. Then the Scourge of Valkus, a great dragon that you might want to choose for or get. Five mana for a four, four, Flying Dragon. Whenever it or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of dragons you control. Then you can pay one red for fire breathe and give it plus one plus, one, plus O until end of turn. So this effect, these, these effect and Dragon Tempest I've put in here because of a combination we're going to talk about in a bit. Having dragons enter the battlefield, well, it's pretty easy. Our commander, we're going to be sacrificing it, recasting it with all the mana we're making. And this will kill our opponents if we manage to do it infinitely. Ooh, I wonder if we will. Spoilers, we will. Then there's Dragon Tempest. Two mana for enchantment. Whenever a creature with flying into the battlefield under your control, it gains haste until end of turn. So our commander comes in. Straight away, we're attacking with it. And you know, a 4-4 trampling flyer. It's pretty good. Nice, aggressive, costed uh, for stats. <laughs> Sorry, I fell into a void. Then, whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target creature or player where X is the number of dragons you control. Even if our commander is the only thing, well, ping our opponents for one. And if we're recasting it over and over, well, we're going to build up that damage substantially. And that brings me on to number three. And these are some, well, treasure synergies. And Goldspan Dragon is the best of the best. Five mana dragon. Hey! Flying in haste whenever it attacks or becomes the target of a spell. Create a treasure token. Treasure you control, have tap, sacrifice as artifact, add two mana of any color. So those three tokens that our commander makes, well, now it makes six mana. And you know, six is greater than four, so that's enough to recast our commander, and you know, even with commander tax. And it just helps you accelerate so much because not only are we going to be getting the treasures from our commander, we're going to get treasures from Goldspan, but also I'd put a ton of different treasure to making cut cards into the deck. So, like Magda Brazen Outlaw. Two mana, two one. Other dwarves you control get plus one, so I'm not bothered. Whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, creates a treasure token. So luckily, uh, Magda is a dwarf. We're not going to really fill the deck with too many dwarves, maybe one or two. But where well, you can sacrifice five treasures, search your library for an artifact or dragon card, put that card into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So we've talked about uh, artifacts, we've talked about dragons. This gets either. It's absolutely fantastic. Gets you any piece, you know, mind slaver, <laughs> if you want it. Brilliant card. Then we have Zorn. Three mana, three, two. If you create one or more treasure tokens, instead create those tokens plus an additional treasure token. So our commander now makes four treasures. And it happens to cast four. That's, a, that's, a, that's interesting, isn't it? Maybe an activation on an equipment we're going to talk about costs four as well. So this card, just it's an instant slot in. It works wonderfully. Then we've got Gadrak, the Crown Scourge. Three mana, five, four, flying dragon. Hey! It can't attack unless you control four or more artifacts. Pretty easy with all the treasures we're going to have. At the beginning of the end step, create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn. Well, if we're sacrificing our commander and, you know, making uh, advantage of that, well, we're going to be able to get tons of artifacts on the field. So attacking with this guy, pretty easy. Then there's Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. One mana for a 2-1 ridiculously expensive by the way so uh, just proxy it it's commander who cares it's a monkey pirate whenever it deals combat damage to a player creates a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library until end of turn you may cast that card and you can dash it for two mana dreams you put it in with haste can attack that turn and then at the end of turn if it's not died it returns back to your hand really awesome card gets you the treasures gets you some card advantage it does everything you could want to do it's a little cute monkey lovely then there's the treasure map two mana artifact tap pay one and scry one two scry one put a landmark counter on treasure map then if there are three or more landmark counters remove the counters transform treasure map create three colors treasure artifact tokens with tap sacrifice for up for a mana and the treasure cove is a land that taps for a colorless Ooh. and you can sacrifice the treasure to draw a card so 
Really, really powerful card. Excellent use of all the tokens that we created. Wonderful. I love it. It's ramp, it's card sort of advantage. And even if you don't get to the card advantage stage where you're drawing cards off your treasures, it is card filtering. So you're putting all those rubbish cards to the bottom. Really great card. I love it. Which brings me on to number two. And at number two, we've got Mirror March. So we've got a commander. So when the commander dies, you know, we're going to get some treasures. But why don't we have lots of commanders? Why don't we make copies of our commander? Because due to the legendary rule, when the copy comes in, it'll die. So we'll trigger it straight away. So we can either get those two cards from the top or the treasures. Mirror March is one of the best ways of doing it. Six mana enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, flip a coin until you lose a flip. For each flip you've won, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste, exile them at the beginning of the next end set. So if we win, win three coin flips in a row, well, that's either nine treasures or six cards from the top of our deck or any combination of those two. This just generates so much value. And if we're going to be making sort of gold span dragons, things like that, we can stack up their abilities, you know, get tons of treasures from their attacking. It just works well with everything. And, you know, the, the legendary rule really does usually get in the way of cards like this, but it actually adds to it because we're triggering that ability straight away. Similarly, we've got Delina Wild Mage. Four mana, three, two. Whenever it attacks, choose target creature you control, then roll a d20. Nice bit of randomness here. 1 to 14, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and it has Exile's creature at the end of combat. So with this, we are going to have to have a sacrifice outlet on the field, you know, sacrifice our commander copy, because the legendary rule won't work. But you can get 15 to 20, create one of those tokens, and then roll again. So we could end up with thousands of copies of our commander, if, you know, you rig your dice. This is wonderful. You know, our commander is a 4-4 trampling flyer, so potentially we could just end up killing someone with all those copies. But if we then sacrifice them after combat damage, well, oh, we're going to get tons of advantage, tons of treasures. Wonderful card. Similarly, there's Helm of the Host, 4 mana for equipment. Beginning of combat on your turn creates a token that's a copy of a quick creature. Except that token isn't legendary if a quick creature is legendary. That token gains haste, equipped for five. So we put it on commander. Yes, we have a non-legendary copy of our commander, but we can always sacrifice it. You know, sacrifice outlet, always good. Then using the legendary rule to our advantage is Blade of Selves. Two mana equipment, equipped creature has Myriad. Oh, what a mechanic Myriad is. Whenever it attacks for each opponent other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of that creature that's tapped and attacking. That player or planeswalker they control, exile the tokens at end of combat. So if you've got 23 opponents, you know, because obviously you're always playing 24 man commander, you're going to make 23 copies. No, sorry, uh, 22 because you're already attacking someone. And then all of them come in, the legendary roll kicks in. We've got 22 triggers. Well, what are we going to do? Probably make a ton of mana. Really, really great card. Then a classic, you know, if you played modern, Splinter Twin, four mana for an aura and chant creature. Chant creature has tap, puts a token to copy that creature onto the battlefield. The token gains haste, exile at the beginning, the next end step. So this is really, really nice because we can just tap our commander. Bing, bang, bosh. We've got a trigger and we've kept our commander on the field. So if that gets, you know, board wiped or something like that, we get another trigger. Wonderful card. Amazing. Then there's Mimic Vat. Three mana artifact imprint. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exile with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard. Pay three and tap creates a token that's a copy of the card exile with Mimic Vat. Against haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So again, we're going to need some sort of sacrifice outlet because the exile won't trigger our commander's ability. But being able to make a token copy of our commander whenever we want is amazing. And what you'll find with Mimic Vat is yeah, we can put our commander on it. That's okay. But eventually, someone's Ulamog is going to die or something like that. It's going to go to a grave and you're just like, well, I'd rather have that. Thank you very much. And then you can steal it, pay three mana to get a tasty token copy. Finally, there's Mirror Pool, a land. That's a mythic. When it enters the battlefield, it enters tapped. Tapped for a colorless, which isn't a problem in a mono red deck. Pay three and a colour, so, you know, you'll have Sol Rings and stuff knocking around to make colours. Sacrifice Mirror Pool, copy target instant sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. That's pretty cool, nice removal spell or whatever. 
Spaw and a colors tap, sacrifice it, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of tag creature you control. So a land that can make a copy of our commander. Love it. It's wonderful. It just does everything the deck wants us to do. Which brings us on to number one. And at number one, we've got Nim Death Mantle. One of my favorite cards ever printed. So, so good. And it works in so many good ways with this deck. Two mana for an equipment equipped creature has plus two plus two is Intimidate and is a black zombie. So our commander is a 6-6 six, six flying trampler. So making it into a, uh, no it's not, it's a 4-4. Four, four, so making it into a 6-6 six, six with Intimidate as well will just allow us to get the beats in and potentially kill someone with commander damage. However, whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay four mana. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim Death Mantle to it. So if we've got a Sacrifice Outlet and we've got one of those things, you know, Goldspan Dragon or Zorn, that allows our commander to make four treasures or the treasures make six mana, we can activate that ability using those treasures, pay the four mana and our commander comes back onto the field. Then we sacrifice it again, do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And it just keeps spiraling out of control and we get infinite into the battlefield, infinite dies triggers, infinite mana potentially. It's such a good card and I love it. Ashen Adalta, one of the best sacrifice outlets you can have. Three mana for an artifact sacrifice creature. Add double colors to your mana pool. So with the three treasures that our commander is making, this allows us to actually make five mana. So we're going to be netting mana every time we sacrifice a commander and bring it back. And so once we've got infinite mana, you know, we've got 40 billion treasure tokens. I own that many tokens. They're in that cupboard behind me, actually. Um, what you can do is start exiling top cards of your library until you get to your win condition and then cast it, potentially a storm card. I don't know. You can win however you want, as long as you're actually winning. Then there's Greater Gargadon, another good sacrifice outlet that sacrifices artifacts. You know, I thought that was interesting because we're gonna have a lot of treasures, so being able to sacrifice them is quite useful and, you know, get an effect. Eight, 10, oh, 10 mana for a suspend 10, nine, seven. Sacrifice an artifact creature or land, remove the time counter from Greater Gargadon. Activate this ability only if Greater Gargadon is suspended. So suspend is an ability, you pay one red to put it into exile and then it ticks down and eventually you cast it with haste. But this is great for just sacrificing whatever you want. It can go wrong if your opponent steals your turn, if your opponent mind slavers you. Uh, you're going to end up with no lands, but it's not the end of the world. It's just a great card. Then another great sacrifice outlet that sadly costs a lot of money. Phyrexian Altar, three mana artifact, sacrifice creature, add one mana of any color. So along with the three treasures, it's going to make us four mana. Hey, it's the magic number. Nim Death Mantle can bring back our commander. And those are my top five cards for this new legendary spirit dragon. Really, really cool. I like Kamigawa. It's, um, it's always been a favorite sort of plane of mine. I didn't play during it, but the artwork and everything that I like, just so, I don't know, nostalgic. It just looks cool. And this new set, you know, who doesn't like, like a bit of cyberpunk? Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.